Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of T Dog RC. Coming thick and fast now, um, and today we've got another unboxing to do, and we are going to be unboxing this, which is the new Jura Fly Goblin from Hobby King. This only came out uh, last Wednesday, so it's, uh, I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so it's less than a week old. Um, so I ordered it pretty quick. Uh, I'm not affiliated with Hobby King or anything like that, so buy these with my own money. Um, some uh, there's quite a few reviews out there already on YouTube, and those guys, you know, they've they've got big channels with lots of subscribers, and, and they get sent these things for review, which is, is very nice. Of course, if you were to like and subscribe to my channel, then maybe one day I'll uh, get that opportunity as well. But that means I bought this with my own money, so you know it's an unbiased uh, unboxing. Um, so hopefully uh, you, you'll enjoy it and uh, let's get stuck in. Right, so let's get this thing cut open. I've, I've not, uh, obviously I've had it nearly a week but I've not, uh, not got it open yet so we'll uh, just take the tape off there. Now, I've literally just been watching a live stream tonight of um, Matt from uh, the Rag the Nuts Off channel. Um, great channel. He's a, he's a funny guy. Um, fellow uh, Englishman as well, which is always good. Um, and uh, he's basically, uh, as far as I can tell, he, he, he might not agree with this, but he, he appears to be absolutely uh, slating this. And the reason is, um, his reason is, um, apparently... You have to add a load of lead to the nose to get the thing to see a CG, um, and without that, it's it's just awful because it's massively tail heavy, and it's also an extremely twitchy and fast model anyway. Um, so, I you know, obviously I don't know that yet. I'm I'm going to uh, see how this one fares. Hopefully, I won't have to do that, but it's looking like um, from what I've seen that I probably will have to do that, uh, which is a bit frustrating really. Um, that the you know they don't check those things first before they send these out. But uh, anyway, let's have a quick look what we've got in the box. So, let's see, let's get this uncut. Uh, nicely packed as usual. Um, some protective pieces along the top, which is always good to see. And everything's individually bagged as well by the looks of things, so that's good. Right, let's have a look at the wings first. So, um, interesting thing about this, I think it's probably the first model that I've um, bought that's got uh, a single piece swing. Normally you have to stick the two wings together. Um, but yeah, this is a, a single piece, so it's uh, joined for you. And as you can see, pretty, pretty damn small. Um, servos are already installed and at first you look at this and you think, ah, brilliant. The linkages are even installed, which is fantastic because normally you always have to do that. Um, but unfortunately, in the case of this uh, particular model, it comes with ball links and there's a manufacturer's note in the box somewhere, I should think, um, to say, uh, and certainly what I've seen on YouTube is that you have to replace these ball links with some included uh, clevises because apparently these ball links are not up to the job, which is a little bit frustrating again, especially when they've done it for you. But first impressions are, it's a great colour, nice uh, nice yellow finish on it, um, and these uh, decals have been applied really nicely. Um, so they actually look like, uh, often when I get a, a model, a foam model and it's got decals on, I usually get my uh, eye in and just run over it um, with, a, with a sock just to help um, get these decals like firmly planted onto the, the foam. But it looks like they've actually done that themselves because uh, these have been really nicely applied. So that's good. So we've got the uh, tail section next. So let's just get this open. I'll tell you what, let me uh, move this out of the way so you can see a little bit more. Yeah, I've got this box in the way. So, 
So um, vertical uh, stabiliser, no rudder on this, it's just a solid piece. Um, yeah, that's it is what it is really, not much to say about that. We'll save the fuselage until last. So next thing is the uh, horizontal stabiliser or the elevator. Nice little uh, stabiliser there, Hori um, yeah, horizontal stabiliser. Foam hinges, so you always give these a bit of a flex, um, so they're not um, not too stiff when you connect your servers up. Again, they've they've got the ball links attached already there, but unfortunately, as I said, you're going to have to uh, swap these for the clevises, which are included. Um, and then we have got this little beast. So that's the uh, fuselage, it's, it's really quite small, it looks a lot bigger on the Hobby King website than, than it actually is in, in real life. Um, absolutely massive spinner uh, and uh, stubby little prop and uh, it's quite amazing really that, that uh, you know there's hardly any of the prop actually showing over the fuselage but uh, obviously it still creates plenty of thrust to get the thing through the air. Um, there's the ESC, 45 amp Aerostar ESC which is good. Uh, this, I believe, is the hatch that comes off. In here we've got an XT60, uh, which is always good to see, my favourite sort of connection. Uh, and then you've got the little uh, elevator servo down there, um, already mounted obviously. And uh, they've included a bit of foam on the battery tray, which is always nice to see. And uh, there's a, a Velcro strap as well, which is, which is good. Uh, now what I've heard is, uh, because of this issue with this, the uh, CG is that you have to get the battery as far forward as you can um, and there's a couple of little foam um, sort of blocks down there um, I don't think you're going to be able to see those from the camera but who knows I'll try maybe you can maybe you can't um, but I've heard that quite a few people have just trimmed those off um, just try and give you give you about an extra 10 mils um, to push that battery uh, right down to the to the front um, I think as well, uh, I've seen a few people do this and I'm going to do the same, is I'm going to put a little um, light ply tray here uh, and that's where I'm going to mount my receiver. And once again I'm going to be using a co-pilot uh, FreeSky S-Bus combo in this, um, purely so I can hand launch it without having to worry too much about it. Because what I've seen from some of the videos is it's, it's such a tiny model, it's got an absolutely huge motor in it, I mean the, the weight of the of the front of this is ridiculous. I mean, it's amazing that it, it's tail heavy actually when you feel the weight of this. Um, but what I've seen from the videos is when you hand launch it, it's got a really violent um, torque roll to the right. Um, and if you don't catch it, um, it's either the left or the right, I can't remember to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's got a violent torque roll on takeoff anyway. Um, and if you don't catch that, obviously there's a, there's a risk that um, you would um, crash the model potentially. Uh, but of course with the co-pilot uh, in launch mode, it'll hopefully sort all that out itself and I won't have to worry about that. Um, one of the things to note uh, if you get one is that you've got the right thrust angle uh, on the motor. Uh, some of the pre-production versions apparently didn't have the right uh, thrust angle set here and, and I've seen on a couple of reviews when they were opening the throttle it, it just basically climbed and was almost uncontrollable, almost looping. Um, but I can see from this one that that's got a decent bit of um, um, down thrust there on, on the motor. You can see there's a, there's a gap there and there is a measurement as well um, to check this. Uh, that's I'm sure it's about 4 mils from the top of my head and to me that looks about, about right but I will double check that. Also another recommendation which is something that I will do is to just take the uh, nose cone off and get the prop balanced as well. Um, so in terms of putting it together I think it's a pretty quick build. Um, it's a glue, glue assembly so um, there's no screws or anything like that but it's a case of gluing the tail on. It's nice that they have notched this out if uh, any of you have watched my um, free wing MiG-15 video, uh, you'll note that I was um, having a bit of a moan about the fact that the vertical stabiliser, there's no notching for it or anything like that. You literally just stick it on 
um, which I don't like, but with this, they, they have actually, uh, for this, there's a little notch there, which sits in a groove there. So that's quite nice, and uh, obviously glue that on. I'll be using foam tack to uh, glue this together. And then the tail, um, again, that's got a couple of uh, notches in it. You can see there, there's, there's two notches uh, along the back and along the top. So again, a bit of foam tack and glue that in position. And that's actually going to lock in place, which again is, is a good example of what I'm talking about. Without any glue, that's actually locked into place. And I think all models really, if, if you're going to if you're going to make a model that's that's all glue construction and it's not a screw construction, then you should at least put these notches in place so it, it will go together uh, and not just rely on a surface to surface fit. Um, so yeah, that's going to be uh, pretty straightforward. And then you actually have to glue the wings on, which again is quite unusual really. Most models that I have, or in fact all the models I've got, um, the wings uh, are screwed on. So we'll just glue that on there. Uh, I think I'm going to have to quickly move these servo leads out of the way. Let's just get rid of that. See if we can get this to go on there. Come on, one servo lead is getting in the way. There we go. Uh, that's more or less glued on there. Uh, sorry, more or less fitted on there. I think the leads are still in the way a little bit, but obviously I'll sort that out when I actually come to do it. But look at that, it's, uh, it really is a tiny little thing. It's quite mad. I can't believe how small it is. It's probably the smallest model I've got. Um, apparently it does up to 100 miles an hour. But again, uh, I've seen someone post on, on YouTube um, on the, the little messages that you can put on now. They've said that they were a little bit underwhelmed at the speed and it wasn't as, as fast as they thought it was going to be. But we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, but either way, it is a cool looking little thing. I love the colour scheme. That's really nice. I always like black and yellow colours. A little bit of Formula 1 team. Um, so yeah, I, I do quite like that. Now in in uh, in the flesh, it looks like quite a sporty, fast little thing, uh, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's just hope we can get the uh, CG sorted. Uh, let me quickly go through these other bits. So also in the box, uh, let's just get this open. You get a little skid plate, which goes along here there's a cutout for that again and i'll probably sino that in place or hot glue maybe um won't be using foam tack for that um so yeah skid plate goes under there and then there's some extra decals um with some numbers on um and the idea behind this is if you have got a bunch of mates and you want to race these you can customize it with your own numbers uh, so you can see who's who in the sky uh, so there's quite a few sets of numbers um, so, yeah, I'll probably hang on to those, you never know. Uh, and then here's the clevises that they've included, which they recommend to um, replace the ball links with. And uh, they have, which is quite nice, included the little bit of silicon tubing to go over um, the clevis to keep it in place. So that's good to see. Fair play on that. Uh, and then they've also, uh, I think Hobby King have started doing this because they always get... And I don't know why, to be honest, but they get a lot of stick. And sometimes if you read the comments on the Hobby King um, reviews, uh, people say, oh, there's no instructions. I can't believe there's no instructions. But you can always go to the Hobby King website and download the instructions as a PDF. And then you can print it out or you can get it on your phone. But I think because of that, they have started including these quick start guides, uh, which is good to see. Um, you know, it's quite helpful. So this has got uh, throws on it for the elevator and the air runs. On... Essential RC's review um, that I saw, um, Dom, who, who runs that channel, had hardly got any movement at all on this thing, and it was still, uh, you know, the roll rate, etc., was crazy. Um, it, it, it's, it's that quick. Um, you hardly need any movement um, at all on your surfaces. Um, and this has also got the CG on it, so it's 45 to 50 mils. And then there's that notice there, production notice. It says, you may have received ball link connected on the air runs of your goblin. 
In this case, we recommend you replace these with included clevisters for improved control authority in flight. Interestingly, it doesn't say elevator, it just says aileron, but uh, I'll be using those on the uh, aileron's as well. They've included enough clevisters in the pack for the aileron's, so why not use those? Um, what else can we talk about here? Let's just go through the specs quickly. Sorry, I should have done this at the start. Uh, <clears throat> so, wingspan is 820 mils. It's 650 mils in length. They're saying 820 grams all at weight, ready to fly. So that's with the battery. Uh, it's got 7x6 prop. It's got that Aero Star 45 amp SC on there. Uh, three 9 gram servos. Um, the motor is a 3536 1400 kV. So it's a big, stocky motor. 3536, that's a decent sized motor, and the recommended battery is uh, 1000 to 800 milliamp 4S. Now, I would say from what I've seen, um, 1000, you're not going to get this thing to balance by the looks of things. Um, uh, so I would go with, uh, I've actually bought, uh, I've got some six, uh, I've got some 1400 graphite packs which I've I bought um, for a model and I've never used it. So we're using those, and I've also just bought a pair of 1600 milliamp 4S Rhino packs uh, from Hobby King. I've never had the Rhino packs before, so we're interested to see uh, what they're like. But yeah, I think I'd certainly go with the upper end of the battery uh, size there, just to get the thing to, to balance. So yeah, that's it. So next job is obviously to put it together. I'll be doing a build video on that. Um, let's just see if... I mean, I don't exactly know where the CG marks are, but I would guess around there. And let's see what happens. Let's see, at the moment, that's definitely nose heavy. Um, let's just have a quick look. Yeah, I'm too far, too far back there, so. CFG's about there. So it's actually about there. Let's see. I should obviously be doing this with the model upside down, but I can't because the wings aren't fastened on. But yeah, uh, actually, as it stands now, I would say that that is almost balanced. It's maybe a little bit tail heavy, but only just. If I tip it, Oh, just like that lot, that's, that's nose heavy. Um, but, you know, most people I think um, who've reviewed it have said you need a bit of lead up front, so I can't argue with that. Now, and I think what I'm going to do is if you take this nose cone off, there's quite a big gap inside there, and you can get some lead in the front there to get it balanced. But, uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame that you have to do that on a brand new model. Really, you want to be able to put it together, put the battery in and go and fly it. And you don't want to be adding more weight to a model, but... Um, you don't want this thing tail heavy, especially not a little model like this and as fast as this. You want it to be uh, uh, a little bit nose heavy to, to get some control over it. Anyway, there we are. Jorah Fly Goblin from Hobby King, fresh out of the box. Um, so that's this video done. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've picked up a few tips if you're thinking of buying one. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you do want to buy one. Um, although I'm not affiliated with Hobby King, if you click on that link um, it does give me a couple of points that I, uh, eventually I can spend in the store, which again helps me do some more reviews uh, and helps me grow this channel. So if you do want to buy one, if you could click that link, I'd really appreciate it. That would be fantastic. And as ever, um, if you've enjoyed this video and you've not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a penny to do that. Uh, and also, if you could give it a thumbs up if you like it. Any comments um, that uh, you've got, stick them in the comments box if you've got any box even. If you've got any questions, then put those in the comments box and I'll answer any questions. If you want to know anything about the model before you buy it, you want me to measure something on the model or something like that, stick, it, stick a comment on and uh, I'll, I'll take a look. Unfortunately, I'm not at the point where I've got thousands of comments coming in because I've got loads of followers. So it does mean that, uh, well, unfortunately, fortunately, it does mean that uh, any comments I get, I do respond to them because it's not a problem for me. Okay, good stuff. I shall see you again soon for the build video of this. Cheers.